Bradley and Sharon Higgins for the beauty of the chancel that greeted us this morning. And it's really a wonderful thing to have that volunteer energy to, to take something so that when we walk in, we feel like we've been welcomed. And of course, that's the whole theme of Christmas, and especially this year in our focus on the stable. When we looked at this work presented to us by Dr. Marsha McPhee, she stressed a bit of a twist on the old story. And her thought was, how can we as churches, because she works with churches like ours across Canada and the States, how can we help people see that not only do we travel in Advent to Bethlehem to an inn, but that we are, in fact, ourselves mangers. We are ourselves places where the holy dwells and is born and born and born. Beautiful, huge concepts for us to unpack in the weeks ahead. I don't know if it's something you think of every year, that you, you are a house for the holy. And yet, I see you acting on your recognition over and over again that you see others as that. What a blessing that is. At Christmas, we remember the story. I don't know if you caught it at the end of that little piece from New Zealand. Their accents were hard to understand, but in the credits it said, based on a true story. And so our series would have to say the same thing, based on a true story, that Jesus was born into a simple stable because there wasn't any room. And over and over again, Luke and Matthew, in telling us this story, stress that Jesus was on the edge. Mary and Joseph were tired, they were poor, and they didn't have a place of welcome. That's one of the huge threads in this story over and over again we have to wrestle with that how is it when we make it cute you know I thought I did laugh out loud with that little boy having to put Mary in a cart but actually it's about the divine light shining in the dark corners Christmas is about God being found in the most unlikely of places in the most unusual time Christmas gives us all a part to play, not in a pageant like we might have if you were a child in a Sunday school, but in the pageant of life, the pageant of life in this crazy part of the 21st century. And the Holy Spirit wants us all to know that we have a part because we are belongers. We are part of this story. That's based on the true story of our lives. John Vandelar wrote a poem last summer, this summer, I guess, that really resonates with that words of the psalm that Kyla read about our trust at this time when it says, make your ways known to us. It's hard for us to know what that means. And so hope is the anticipation that there is an answer, asking each other, what would that answer be for you? This is John's poem, and he just calls it an open space. The calls are always there, God, to be more, have more, do more. Every corner of our lives needs to be filled with something. Every step, every word, every thought must be pregnant with meaning and purpose. We need to prevail, triumph, and win the race except no one ever wins, not really. We run as fast as we can to stand still, and so many get left behind, broken, poor, depleted. Perhaps in this Advent time, waiting time, we can learn to let go, slow down, open up. Perhaps we can begin to clear away some of the clutter and open up a space within us for silence, for stillness, for hope, for the holy. And maybe, just maybe, 
as we create this open space, we will find more room in our lives for generosity, for laughter, for connection, for caring, for love, for life. That's John's poem, An Open Space. I saw some indications of that hope in action this week. I was in my office, which as you know is in the Christian education wing. Well, if you didn't, you do now. And back and forth outside my office was being trucked kit after kit of gingerbread houses to be distributed to families in our neighborhood closer to Christmas. We had our own Christmas miracle here. I'm looking for someone to help me write it up as a Hallmark movie. They always have a Christmas miracle, don't they? It usually involves selling a store for some reason. But you know, this week, our boiler failed in the fellowship hall. And you know that every night in the fellowship hall, people sleep in the warmth on mats to get out of the cold, the unhoused in our neighborhood. And so they slept in the cold because our boiler was not functional. Now, the Christmas miracle had two parts. By the time I got here that night, after the call had gone out for blankets, there were already two full bins of blankets from our congregation and from the congregation at Broadview United Church. That's part one of the miracle. The workers there who greeted me, and I have to tell you, Alan Saunders was next on the scene, who's the board chair at our place, said, I think we've got enough now. I was not deterred. I gave my blanket anyway. But the other miracle was spare parts for this ancient boiler of ours were right here in Victoria. Now, you yes, you know, the roads are not passable in so many places. The boiler, the room was ice cold. I didn't know what we were going to do because people had been flooded out all the big industrial heaters were drying people's basements. You see how it all works together. And so for us to be able to have the next day that boiler repaired, it just felt to me like a gift of hope. You know, we think it's all broken and we awfulize about what's next, and there it was. A very simple, small illustration, though, an important one, of hope. People are putting together packages for those same folks in our hall at Christmas time. They're baking cookies. They're collecting things. The evolving church is working hard. Penny, Penny Bond is going to have a statue put up to her in a park somewhere with petunias at the bottom. And so she should, because her work is tireless on behalf of the folks getting the angel gifts. And, you know, these are small enough things. And Maybe you yourself are hoping to get an angel gift, and that's still part of the hope paradigm, isn't it? To breathe in and out hope. Sometimes we need it, sometimes we have enough to share it. This last week has been a very, very difficult one in British Columbia. You know, it's, you always look for who's helping. That's where we get our hope from whoever donated that made it possible to buy those gingerbread houses, the folks who gave of their blankets, the folks who are shopping for strangers for angel gifts, little tiny flames of hope. You have just one small flame burning, but in its intensity is beauty and a hope for rebirth. Happy Advent 1. Amen.